is such a different way of enjoying miso. You've seen like like some of my other miso recipes, like that miso salmon. This might be a really good accompaniment if you're doing like a miso tasting course or something like that, like something fun. The first thing you're going to do is add a um, add kind of like all of your aromatics, right? So like your spices and like your vegetables and things like that. Um, so we're going to start with half of a sweet Vidalia or yellow onion um, that just goes into your pot. And then you're also going to add a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. I know that some, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, well, you, you know, why don't you heat up the oil first? I think starting cold, um, especially when you're kind of sweating down onions, I think it works the same way. I think it sweats it up just fine. So over low heat, you don't want to burn the onions. Something that I have found that, or maybe I just found it online somewhere, that uh, helps sweat out the onions a little bit is adding a little bit of salt. I tend not to add a lot of salt to soups because I think everybody has their, um, their favorite level of, of saltiness. There's something about the, the smell of grilled or sauteed onions that just get your taste buds going. So my recipe for this um, miso pumpkin soup doesn't use any garlic. You can add garlic if you want, but for this I like kind of just using onions as the aromatic and um, I think garlic might overpower it just a little bit, but that doesn't mean you can't add garlic. You can't add garlic yourself. That's you know the beauty of soup is you can kind of flavor it up the way you want. So you're gonna keep sauteing the onions until they get to be like a translucent color, but you're not trying to get them to go brown or anything like that. I'm starting to see it get a little bit brown, so I'm going to turn down the heat. And then to this, we're going to add our second aromatic, which is ginger. Now, you can cut up and grate your own ginger if you want, or you can buy one of these tubes. This is the Japanese kind. <laughs> uh, and then this is like the American kind, but the American kind if you look at the ingredients on the back, also includes like uh, extra virgin olive oil, sunflower oil, and a couple of other things. So I tend to go with the Japanese kind. So you're gonna add like a tablespoon of garlic. But it's honestly like to taste. So here we go. The ginger will start popping, so just be careful. <laughs> then to that, we are going to add our spices. So if you if you are going to just use um, uh, just a plain chicken or vegetable broth, then you don't need to add turmeric. Um, or I mean, you need to add turmeric if you're just using a chicken uh, or veggie stock. But in my case, I actually have a chicken bone broth that already comes with turmeric and ginger. So I add a little, obviously, more ginger because I like gingery stuff. Um, and you are going to add an entire cup of broth. And you're going to 
smoosh that around again. Turn the heat back on. And then if you have white pepper, white pepper is great for a dish like this because then you don't see the little black specks, but um, I don't have any. <laughs> so we're just gonna use regular, I'm using a peppercorn medley, uh, but black pepper works fine. So you're gonna see some little black specks in the soup, but I think that's okay. That makes it a little bit more kind of homemade, I guess. Health food people, like nutritionists, will tell you that turmeric is really good with black pepper. So adding that makes it like a bonus health, health dish. While we're waiting for this to heat up, we're going to go ahead and prep the next step, which is our coconut cream and our canned pumpkin. So you, because this is a soup that you can kind of alter the flavors yourself, if you don't find pumpkin, if it's out of season, um, you can use canned butternut squash or even canned sweet potato. Um, if you are feeling adventurous, you can take a whole pumpkin or a whole sweet potato or butternut squash and roast it first and then smush it into your own puree. But honestly, this is the, the beauty of canned goods, right? It's like you can kind of make this anytime because you can keep cans of this in your pantry. To our flavored broth, turn it down just a little bit again. Now, if you're you, doing this um, on top of your own stove at home, you don't really have to keep turning the stove on and off but as you know from my other recipes these kind of tabletop stove things get uh <laughs> they've got a personality so um, you're going to take a quarter cup i'm sorry um, you're going to take a whole can <laughs> the quarter cup is for the coconut cream but for the pumpkin butternut squash sweet potato whatever you choose um you're going to use an entire can and also, another little note, make sure that you <laughs> don't um, mistakenly buy pumpkin pie filling, which is sometimes in stores right next to un unsweetened, unflavored, un uh, pumpkin pie spiced. So just plain, plain pumpkin. And that gets stirred in. And then because we like a creamy soup. So if you're, this is kind of a soup by itself, but I like to add like a little extra creaminess. So we're going to add a quarter cup of coconut cream. And swirl that in. Now you can use just regular cream or even uh, just whole milk or any of you know your favorite uh, alternative um, alternative creams, alternative milks. But I find coconut cream is really, really good with the pumpkin. And it's also really good with butternut squash and uh, sweet potatoes too. And that coconut cream has actually thickened this up a little bit. So I like adding, that's why I like having these kind of pre-made broths because then you can just kind of add a little bit more just to kind of thin it out. And I always like to start with um, the cup of broth because you don't want to, once you make it too soupy, you know, <laughs> you can't go back. So I guess you could add more pumpkin puree, but then it becomes this uh, challenge of like, how much pumpkin, how much broth, how much pumpkin, how much broth, and the next thing you know, you've got like, you know, a ton of soup. <laughs> Another flavoring agent that's really, really good in this recipe is curry powder. I'm not doing it today because I kind of want to keep it more 
um, just the miso and have it just be creamy, but you can add a little bit of curry powder. Okay, so. Okay, um, let me put this all the way. I'm gonna turn off the heat because it's bubbling at me. Now, if you want a super, super smooth soup, because the only kind of potentially chunky thing in here are those chopped onions, right? So if you, if the texture of that is going to bother you, then you can take an immersion blender like this and blend it in here, or you can transfer this into like a blender and just pulse it until it's completely smooth. Um, but I kind of like the, the little bit of rustic, rusticness. And I did cut those um, onion pieces really, really small. So if anything, they'll just be really soft. So we're gonna go ahead and let this cool just a little bit. Might take about five, 10 minutes. So we'll be right back. Okay, so the soup has cooled to warm, not bubbly. <laughs> and we are going to be adding our quarter cup of white miso. You can use red miso if you want, but white miso is a milder flavor. So for something like this, I prefer white miso. Um, and we're just going to <laughs> put that right in there. And we're gonna stir that in. The heat from the soup, um, not boiling, <laughs> is going to kind of melt the little chunk of miso that you put in there. So don't worry too much. If you're, if you're impatient, if you're very patient, you can kind of keep stirring this until um, all the miso dissolves. If you are not super patient or you are in a rush for whatever reason, you could totally just use your immersion blender or again, Put the soup in and then add the miso and then run the, the actual blender. Blend, blender. <laughs> it's like making like a brew. <laughs> and that is our soup. Now again, if this is too thick, add some more broth. If you cool this and then you want to reheat this again, instead of just popping in the microwave, add a little bit of broth um, because soups have a tendency to get really thick once they stop being hot. So, okay, so let me go ahead and get this all cleaned up and we'll put this in these little, little cute uh, containers. Um, you can just use a regular bowl, but I found these little cute Japanese containers and we'll come back and do a taste test. So we'll be right back. And we're back. Look at the soup. Actually, look at the container. <laughs> it's like the, it's the same container that I use for making chawamushi, which is our steamed egg custard. That's super, super uh, traditional Japanese um, as like kind of like an appetizer. Um, but look, it's such a pretty kind of single serving bowl that I kind of wanted to use it for the soup. But you can put it in a mug, you can put it in a bowl. <laughs> for in terms of like toppings for this, there are obviously things that would just make it look pretty, but also add like a little extra, extra something, something. So um, we're going to take some Greek yogurt and a little bit of our coconut cream and mix that together. Or you can just use a straight kind of coconut. Coconut yogurt is really, really good. So you're just gonna add a little dollop right on top. And I hope it doesn't sink. <laughs> if you make this too thin, it'll sink, so. Um, and then on top of that, we're gonna add some pumpkin seeds. If you're using like sweet potatoes, you can use um, walnuts instead. <laughs> I 
you can get super kind of high-end high-end restaurant with that um, and then a couple of just sprigs of chives which goes great because we already have those like sweet green uh, sweet yellow onions in there and then a final little dash of this is shichimi um, and shichimi togarashi is togarashi is a is like a japanese hot pepper um, but shichimi literally means seven flavors so it's got uh the japanese chilies in there but it's also got like sesame seeds and like seven other ingredients that kind of make this a little t a little hot but not super super hot if that makes sense and look at that that looks so pretty i don't want to tip it too much because it's gonna pour out of the bowl. <laughs> um, but let's do a little taste test. We still have yogurt and coconut cream. Mm. Let me give this a shot. Mmm. That miso has a salty umami flavor to it. So just that tiny little bit of um, pink salt that we added to the onions when we were first sauteing those, that is the only salt that we've added to this. And it's plenty. It's not a sweet soup um, because pumpkins, when they're just straight, out of a can or just as a vegetable. It's not a, not a super, super sweet vegetable. You can use like a kabocha squash um, or a sugar pumpkin if you want a slightly sweeter flavor. Um, but most canned pumpkins aren't really sweet. So keep that in mind. Mm. It's such a different way of enjoying miso. You've seen like like some of my other miso recipes like that miso salmon this might be a really good accompaniment if you're doing like a miso tasting course or something like that like something fun um there's a lot of artisanal um mom and pops now making um art artisanal miso <laughs> instead of like buying stuff in a supermarket so if you have um, like a farm or um a uh kitchen that makes homemade miso try it out in this recipe. I think you'll really enjoy it. I'm going to finish the rest of this. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye! Mm.